Hi chemists, welcome to your choice on your unit menu covalent compounds. In this video, I am going to discuss with you how to draw Lewis structures for molecules and polyatomic ions. By the end of this video, you should be able to draw Lewis structures of covalently bonded compounds, including polyatomic ions. Make sure as you watch this video, you are taking notes and you have your periodic table handy. Before we start talking about Lewis structures, we need to discuss electronegativity. So if you recall, electronegativity is basically where you have two atoms that are essentially attracting electrons. And these are usually involved in a chemical bond. This is a quantity that is calculated given a bunch of different conditions. Um, it's not actually measured directly in the lab, but this was a trend that you most likely learned about on your periodic table um, when you were doing periodic trends. This is a periodic table of different um, electronegativities for all these different elements. And you can see as you go from um, left to right, you can see that the electronegativity is going to increase with fluorine having the highest electronegativity value. And then if you go down, like for example, if you're going down a group, you can see electronegativity decreases. So basically as you go this way, you're gonna expect to see that elements in the upper right hand corner are gonna have the highest electronegativity value. So let's talk about how to draw the perfect Lewis structure. So there's a few steps here. The first one is you want to count the valence electrons for all atoms involved. And if you have an ion, remember you're going to want to add or subtract that number of electrons. Then you'll want to put the atom in the middle that is the least electronegative, and that's why I reviewed the electronegativity trend with you before. The third step is where you'll take a single bond and you'll form it between the central atom and each terminal atom, or the atoms on the outside. That's what a terminal atom is. Then you'll have to add the electrons in to satisfy the octets for the terminal atoms. You do it one atom at a time. Any electrons that are left over must go around the central atom. And then this is the important step that students always seem to forget. So I'm going to put a little star here. Check to make sure the central atom has a full octet. If not, that's the only time when you would form double or triple bonds from the terminal atoms. So let's practice some examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the Lewis structure for this molecule CH4. And for convenience, I have the steps on the left-hand side. So the first step is to count the valence electrons for all atoms in the molecule. So carbon, for example, is in group 14. Therefore, it has four valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group one. It has one valence electron. However, there are a total of four hydrogen atoms, so I need to actually multiply this by four. So four plus four will give me a total of eight valence electrons. So we took care of step one. Step two is to put the atom in the middle that is least electronegative. Well, the good news is, is that we know that hydrogen is only satisfied with two electrons. So that means that hydrogen is always going on the outside. So that makes it a little bit easier for us because now we know carbon is always going in the middle here. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen. So we took care of step two. Step three is to form a single bond between the central atom and each terminal atom. So I'm going to put one here, 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 and here. Remember, a single line represents two electrons, so I've got a total of eight electrons right now in my diagram. Number four says satisfy the octets of the terminal atoms. Well, fortunately, the terminal atoms are all hydrogen and they're already satisfied with two, so number four is done for us already. There aren't any electrons left over because as we said, we have eight, so number five is done. And then as far as number six, remember, this is the important one that students always seem to forget. Check to make sure the central atom has a full octet. Well, check it out. Carbon has a total of eight electrons around it, so we're good there too. So that's an example for drawing the Lewis structure for methane. Let's try another one. So this is for CO2. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to count up my electrons. I've got four for carbon. Notice I have two oxygens here. So I'm going to take the six electrons from one oxygen and then multiply that by two. So six times two is 12, plus another four is going to be a total of 16 electrons. So we took care of step one. Step two is to put the atom in the middle that is least electronegative. Remember we said electronegativity is going to increase as you go to the right. 
oxygen is more right than carbon. So what that means is that carbon has to go in the middle. And I will tell you a little trick. Carbon's always go in the middle no matter what. So whenever you see carbon, always put it in the middle. We're going to attach those oxygens around it. You can put it any, anywhere you want. Then it says form a single bond between the central atom and each terminal atom. So I'm going to put a bond here and a bond here. Notice right now in our picture, I have a total of four electrons, right? Each line represents two electrons. So now what I have to do is I have to satisfy the octets of the terminal atoms. I'm going to do it one atom at a time. So right now I have a total of four electrons. I can only go up to 16. So if that's four, this has to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to go over here to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, and then I ran out of electrons. So that takes care of number four. Number five says any electrons left over go around the central atom. Well, I don't have any, so I can't do anything there. So number five's done. Now number six, uh, good old number six. This is the important one. So if you're checking this molecule, hopefully you're saying, wait a minute, the oxygens are satisfied. Each oxygen has a total of eight, because remember each line represents two, and then you have those lone pairs or unshared pairs around the oxygen. But notice the carbon, right? You can see if you notice the carbon, it only has four electrons to it. So what we need to do is we actually need to take a pair of electrons off of this oxygen and make a double bond. And then take a pair of electrons off of this oxygen and then make another double bond. That way you can now see that you have carbon sat be satisfied here. So I'm going to rewrite this structure just to make it a little bit cleaner. Now obviously you guys are hopefully, hopefully writing in pencil. I know I always, oops, I always tell my students to write in pencil. There we go. So this would be the actual structure. Sometimes my students get a little crazy with the double bonds and the triple bonds. So you remember, you're only going to add double or triple bonds if the octet of the central atom is not satisfied. Don't just start adding them in there for no reason. So let's take a look at another example. So this is CH2O. So now we've got three atoms. Okay, we can do this. So what I'm going to do again is count out those valence electrons. We've got four for carbon. We've got um, one for hydrogen, however, there are two of them. And then we have six for oxygen. So four plus six is 10 plus two, it looks like we're gonna have a total of 12 electrons in the picture. So we'll take care of number one, that's good. Number two, put the out of the middle that is least electronegative. So remember what I said, right? Hydrogen's always going on the outside. We said electronegativity is gonna increase as you go right. Oxygen is further right than carbon, so guess what? Carbon's going in the middle again. Hopefully you're noticing some patterns. Patterns are really helpful in this unit. So carbon goes in the middle. I'm going to position my hydrogens around it somehow, some way. Oops, I always hate when that happens. Let me just quickly erase this. Erase, let's try it again. Sometimes my pen does that. There we go, that's a little better. So we took care of number two. Number three, let's form our single bonds. So we got one, two, and three. All right, now I'm just going to take a quick tally. So it looks like we have six electrons in our picture. So now we have to satisfy the octet for the terminal atoms. Notice we've got two hydrogens there. So guess what? They're not getting any more electrons around them. However, oxygen, on the other hand, needs some electrons. So we have six electrons in our picture right now. This will be seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. And guess what? I ran out of electrons. So that takes care of number four. Number five says any electrons that are left over go around the central atom. Well, I, I can't do this one because I don't have any more electrons left over. And then good old number six. Here we go. We want to check to make sure the central atom has a full octet. If not, form double or triple bonds. So in this case, if you look, the carbon, look at that, doesn't have a full octet, it's only got six electrons to it. So we can't take any electrons from hydrogen, right? It's not able to form more than one bond. So guess what? We're gonna take off a pair here and we're gonna make a double bond so that the clean structure is a little better. We'll do this one. Voila, almost there. This would be the structure. So again, notice that I'm not making double bonds or triple bonds unless I absolutely need to. You're only going to do it when the central atom is not satisfied. 
Okay, let's take a look at this one. So this is HCN. Again, we're gonna count up those valence electrons, add or subtract for ions. So it looks like we've got one for the hydrogen. We've got four for the carbon. And it looks like we've got five for nitrogen. So what's that? Let's see, it looks like 10, 10 electrons. We're gonna put the atom in the middle that's least electronegative. So remember we said that hydrogen's always going on the outside. We've got carbon and we've got nitrogen. Nitrogen is further right than carbon. So nitrogen is technically more electronegative. So guess what? We're putting carbon in the middle again. And we'll position our hydrogens and our nitrogens around it. So we did this, we did this. Let's form our single bonds. And then let's satisfy some octets. So right now it looks like I have four electrons in my Lewis structure. So what I need to do is satisfy the octet of the nitrogen because the hydrogen is already satisfied with two. So it's four and this will be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I ran out of electrons. Step five is that any remaining electrons go around the central atom. Again, can't do it because I don't have any more. And then number six, I know I always do this, but it's so true. Check to make sure the central atom has a full octet. Well, look at this, it actually doesn't. So if you look at carbon, it only has four right now. So I'm gonna have to take a pair of electrons off of nitrogen. And when I do that, carbon still only has six. So guess what? We need a triple bond. So our molecule is gonna look like this. Don't forget that unshared pair of electrons with the nitrogen, a lot of students tend to forget that too. So that is an example for HCN. I hope this is getting easier for you. Let's try one more example. And at first glance, you're probably zooming in on, oh my gosh, Miss Raz, it's a polyatomic ion. Yes, this is nitrate. So to do this, we handle it the same exact way. The only thing that we need to kind of just keep track of is the fact that this is an ion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up our electrons. So we've got five for the nitrogen. We've got a total of three oxygen, so it's going to be six times three. And then this negative sign, remember, means that you've added something negative. So you've added an electron. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one to it because that mean, that negative sign means there's an extra electron. So we're going to do six times three, which is 18. And then um, plus one is going to be 19. Plus five, that gives me a total of 24 whew, electrons. So that takes care of number one. Number two, we're going to put that out in the middle that's least electronegative. So in this case, um, this is an interesting scenario because notice you've got nitrogen and you've got those three oxygens. So usually another maybe pattern that you've noticed with some of these compounds is the atom that's listed first is more often in the central position, especially if you have multiples um, like of, the, of another atom. So in this case, we've got three oxygens. So those are actually going on the outside. So in this case, um, and then also, of course, you know, we said that the least electronegative is going in the middle too. And, and on the periodic table, nitrogen is further left than oxygen. So we're still going to put nitrogen in the middle and we're going to position our oxygens around him. And then we're going to form single bonds like we've always done. And then we got to satisfy octets here. So we got a lot of electrons. So it looks like we have six in our picture. So we're going to go up to 24 because that's how many we need. So that's six. This will be seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. I ran out of electrons. We can't, again, add, a, add any remaining electrons because I ran out of them. Um, and then finally, number six, um, check to make sure the central atom has a full octet, if not form double or triple bonds from the terminal atoms. So um, nitrogen does not have a full octet. If you notice, it only has six around it. So guess what? You can take an electron pair from any old oxygen and make a double bond out of it. Again, if you were doing this in pencil, which I hope you are, you would just erase that electron pair and just make that double bond. The other thing is, because this is an ion, typically what you would do is you would actually draw it so that there are brackets around the ion, and then you would put the charge outside. So that's another little extra something something with these, um, but that's typically how you do it whenever you have a uh, polyatomic ion. So I always tell you this, and it is so true, things like this take practice. So if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. You'll have many learning modalities to help you through this. 
So if you're not getting it from this video, feel free to use one of the other choices on the menu. Either way, I think you did a great job today. Thank you so much for watching.